We're going to Tattersalls where MC Andrew Curry will tell us all about it. And Andrew, well, it's over to you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Lee. Gentlemen and ladies, welcome to Tattersalls Club for the 2010 Sports CEO Lunch. For those of you unfamiliar with this club, please indulge me while I give you a very short history lesson. If you look at our window to our left over Hyde Park, you'll see that one end of Hyde Park, the northern end, is rounded. And there's a reason for that, and that's because that's Australia's first racetrack. We're in the middle of Australia's original racing district. And about 152 years ago, a bunch of chaps used to meet around the corner in a pub. And as you well know, the great Australian dream isn't home ownership anymore. It's to take over your favourite pub and not let other people in. <laughs> and these gentlemen did exactly that, and they formed what is now Tattersall's Club. And that was in 1858. Now, that's an interesting year, because in 1858, the first Australian football was started in the Melbourne Football Club. They played their grand games on the MCG. And it's rather interesting that in a sport where most countries import sport, or most things come from the old world, we formulated, codified and started our own rules in an Australian sport before any other country in the world. And therefore, I welcome today, representing the AFL, Dave Matthews. About five years after that, a couple of things happened. One of them happened at Sydney University, one happened at Cambridge University. At Cambridge University, they sat down and decided there was all these different types of football being played all over the UK, and nobody had agreed on what the rules were. The Cambridge chaps sat down and formulated the rules of soccer, uh, football it was obviously called then. And at the same time, here in Sydney, a bunch of blokes picked up a ball at Sydney University, started running around into each other, playing a contact form of the sport. And the excellent documentary, The Birthplace, which I made, which was screened on the Foxtel History Channel, <laughs> describes how in the current era there's no way the insurance people, the lawyers, would let such a thing happen, and yet they did, because young people tr take risks and try things on. Eight years after that, the Football Association and the Rugby Football Union were formed at around the same time, and they decided that some people wanted to get tackled and others simply didn't. Representing Australian Rugby, please welcome John O'Neill. <laughs> and representing Football Australia, please welcome Ben Buckley. Now, most people look to 1908 as the start of rugby league, which is true in this country, but the original breakaway was 1895. The Northern Football Union up in the north of England decided they had something to be cranky about, and if you've been to the north of England, you'll know why. <laughs> and they formed their own game because these guys were supposed to work on Saturdays. It cost them money not to work on Saturdays. They asked for money, and the very, very upper-class chaps from London said, no, you can't possibly take money for sport. What a horrible thing, and so they broke away. And about 13 years later, Daly Messenger and JJ Giltner did something very similar here, and the Australian Rugby League, which it wasn't known by as then, was formed. Please welcome David Gallup. <laughs> now, in 1877, we're skipping back to cricket now because as much as people say Australia is unified by sport, the fact is in winter we are divided by sport. People follow all, all different types of football, but when it comes to summer, we all have something in common, that is the following of cricket. And cricket's key dates are very hard to find early in the history of England, but 1877 in March is the date in which the first test match was ever played. It was played at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Nothing much has happened in Melbourne since, but <laughs> it, was a very, it was a very important turning point in Australian sport that we've all found something we could agree on during the summer months. Please welcome the custodian of cricket, James Sutherland. Folks, the reason I mention all this stuff is because the gentlemen on my left are not just managing businesses, which clearly they are, but they are managing generations of accumulated affection for particular teams and particular codes. If people are familiar with the poem of Bruce Doyle, he says that when children are born in Victoria, they're wrapped in club colours. And that is true, and it's true in different sports all over Australia. We're born into a sporting team or a sporting tribe, and we stay there. And the gentlemen on my left aren't necessarily in sports management, they're in dream management. We're very pleased to have them here at Tattles Club today, and I'm very pleased to pass over the podium to Matt Russell from Fox Sports.